Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to color a horse in a barn with polychromos pencils, and I'll make a scene out of it and turn it into an easel card. So it'll be speed coloring. <laughs> I'm using Technique Tuesday's horse stamp set that has a cat in it. It also has stamps for year-round sentiments. Lots of different ones, lots which are rather funny. Why be a unicorn when you can be a horse? And here are some of the supplies that I'll be using. And that Ink on 3 is a new to me stamp pad. And it is a no line stamp pad. So it does a very light gray line, as you can see. And it seems to hold detail really well. But of course, this is my very first testing of it. So I can't guarantee it for anything. So I will eventually, once I test it with a bunch of mediums and that sort of thing, I will probably give you a heads up on what I think of several of the inks that I purchased from them and let you know. So stay tuned for that later on. The paper that I'm using is actually, believe it or not, Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper. I've had this pad sitting around for ages. I'm not a big fan of the hot press paper. But I couldn't figure out what to do with it. So guess what? I'm using it for colored pencil. It seems to have a texture very similar to the Stonehenge, which I like so much. If you're in the color pencil jumpstart class, you'll know how much I rave about that. And I do love it. The color is about the same. It's a little more cream than the Stonehenge, but it's quite nice. And the texture is about the same. It's got a really fine texture so you don't end up with large white areas. You have just lots of small fine texture, which is kind of cool. I don't have the colors on the screen and I'm trying to figure out whether or not to try to do that with my colored pencil videos or not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Because colored pencil I go back and forth with so much it becomes extremely, extremely time consuming to do that with colored pencil videos. With Copic, it seems to be easier to do and easier for my brain to track as well because I can look at what a marker is doing and know what color it is. It's much harder, especially when I'm using several brands of pencil to keep track of them all. But I am gonna try to do what I did this time, which was swatch out the colors after I was done and kind of guess at which browns were used for which parts of the drawing. And I will have that on the blog. So if you really need to see the colors, you can find them. But I do recommend that you figure out how to use your own pencils and not always rely on the teacher. Lots of the watercolor classes that I take, the students come in and drive the teachers nuts by saying, what color did you use? What color did you use? What color did you use? And they, they get as frustrated as I do because as a professional artist, I know that there's no way that someone else, even if they're using the exact same colors, can replicate exactly what I've done. And I can't replicate what a teacher has done, so I just look to get a little bit close. If I use colors they do, great. If I don't, that's great. And I, I learn by doing. If you're always trying to copy someone else, you're going to never develop that confidence in yourself. So I want you to have that confidence to just choose your colors. Here I used a, a brown with some yellow content in it for the undercoat, and then I'm using more of a chocolate brown above it for some shading. And I'm using baby oil and a blending stump to blend the two together. And then I'm going to go over it again with the more chocolate brown kind of color and a little bit of black as well to start adding that depth. So intensifying that color as we learned in the colored pencil jumpstart class. So I'm going to just keep adding a little bit more definition. You can pull up pictures of horses on Google and look for where the muscles are because they're not indicated on a horse like this. But what I was trying to do was look for where some of those body parts are and to try to put, put shadows behind things so I'd pull one muscle out in front of another. So for instance, on this front leg, I put shadows behind the leg and on the chest on the other side so that that leg starts to pull out forward from the horse's body and then put a shadow behind the hindquarters and before it gets to the leg so that that back leg recedes back and the, the horse's body starts to pull forward from the back leg that sort of thing. I'm not actually looking at any horse pictures. I recommend you might want to do that because I have, probably have 
the structure of a horse all wrong, but I was trying to just have fun coloring and not get all stressed out about trying to find every single horse muscle because I'm not a horse expert by any means. But I thought it would be fun to at least try a horse because I haven't done one in forever because nobody makes any horse stamps, I guess. So I'm going to use a little bit of the blending solution again on the gray because the gray is actually going to be a black mane and tail. So I will start going in with the black now to start adding more contrast. The lighting for this is coming from outside and the outside is off to the right. And you'll see when I get the scene in there that it's we're standing inside the barn with the horse and the cat and the light is coming through the barn door. This was based on one that I did, uh, a coloring I did of this image when I was at my stamp group recently, and I was playing around with it using Copics, but it was really intensive work with Copic markers, so I didn't feel like doing that again. So I will have a picture of that one over on my blog so you can at least see what the Copic version looked like and how I'm simplifying it for colored pencil because colored pencil to color that much would take forever. The video as it is would have been an hour and a half long if I had had it in real time. So that is why I don't have colored pencil videos in real time. They do end up sped up. To create the scene, I'm just really doing a box for the door. So a vertical and then a horizontal for the top of the door. And then I'm going to use a different brown. This brown is a little less saturated. So find one that's a little more of a grayish brown, just so that the horse doesn't blend completely into it. And then I'm coloring from the, the door side, from the door edge, and then I want to bleed it off the side. So I'm just trying to get my inside color on that inside section fairly contrasty. And then when I get to the outside of the horse is when it's going to have to start bleeding off because the, the Copic one covered the entire sheet of paper and that's much easier to do with Copic markers. A lot of people wonder why I choose to use pencil for one thing and, and Copic for another or watercolor for another. Some of it is just I feel like working in one medium or another. And other times there's just there's all different kinds of reasons. If I wanted a full background on this, I would never do this in colored pencil. It would take probably four or five hours to do this whole thing. There are some techniques in the, the Jumpstart class that might help with that, but you'll have to take the class to find those out. But I'm just using pencil itself, a really, really light pencil to create this vignette around like the back side of the horse. So it just starts to slowly, slowly bleed off the page into white and instead of trying to make it all filled in solid, because that's just so hard. I'm creating a little bit of light coming in from the outside. So I have that angle underneath, like where the horse is, should be on about the same angle as the shadows and things. And then I even created a little shadow under, you can see very, very lightly under the cat's butt. So that, that creates a rectangle of light coming in from outside. Put a little grass out there in the field, and then I'm going to use a couple of colors, kind of rainbow colors, to make a little bit of a sunset out in the distance that's casting all of this light into our little little barn scene. And it's going from yellow to an orange to a red violet, and then it'll go into violet and then into blue as it goes all the way up. But I'm using, as you can see, a super light touch because I don't want this color back here to contrast too much and take away from the horse. The horse is the important thing here. And I just want a suggestion of a background image. I don't really want to have much more than that. I just want to keep it very, very light so that I have a little bit of color here and just something faint off in the distance and be able to, uh, to have people's imagination fill in the blanks there. So scribble that in and if you have trouble getting the blending on the outside edge you could just carry that off to one edge or what I'm doing is using a dry blending stump to blend some of that color together. You can also use your kneaded eraser in context along with it if you need to. 
adding little trees right along here so that I can have a tree line out in the distance. And then I wanted to increase the, the line that is around the door because that's where the light's hitting it. So I used a stick eraser to do that. And then I drew a fence with a very sharp pencil. So there is the finished artwork. And now the trouble of putting it on a card. Like, what are you going to do with something after you spent that much time with it? Well, I'm going to do an easel card because I haven't done one in ages. So five and a half and then two and three quarters is where I put my score lines. And so the way you need to fold it is to have it so it folds in half and then has one end that lifts up and then you're going to put the adhesive on that side. And I'm going to use score tape because I always do. I've cut the card base so it's thinner than my my dies that I used for cutting that black layer and the, the picture layer. And then on the inside I added another panel of the cream paper. So I used the same watercolor paper. And then I've cut out a little little thing so I can put my sentiment on it. And then I wrote just up on the top instructions on how to stand up an easel card so that the recipient knows that's what they're supposed to do. Because this is like this cool little card that kind of needs to be standing up on an easel because I spent so much time on it. I wanted to be standing up and looking beautiful. So an easel card really helps to give it that extra little something something. So thank you for spending a few minutes with me. If you're interested in the Jumpstart class, it's linked on screen as well as in the description down below. Supplies are below as well as on my blog. And I'll see you guys next time.